Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making an amazing coconut cake. So let's get started. First off, set your oven to 350, and you're gonna wanna line three nine inch cake pans with parchment paper and butter and flour them. Into the bowl of my stand mixer with a sifter over it, I'm adding three cups of cake flour. That's 360 grams. I'm also adding in two cups or 400 grams of granulated sugar. So this cake is gonna use the reverse creaming method and we're not gonna cream the butter and sugar up. We're gonna cream the butter into the flour and sugar. I'm adding in one teaspoon of salt. It's gonna give us some contrast. I also want half a teaspoon of baking soda and two and a quarter teaspoons of baking powder. Okay, my scale is done. Oh. And now we're gonna sift this out. <laughs> Don't want to make a mess. Hmm. Give it a quick whisk just to combine everything up. And now I'm adding one cup or 226 grams of nice soft room temperature butter. You can see it's yielding to the touch. It's not melting away. If you watch this channel regularly, which would make me so happy, you'll know that over mixing cake batter is Horrible, it gives you a dense gummy cake because really you're activating the protein in the flour and then it's gonna give you that stretchy, bready consistency, which is not what you want for a cake. This method, we're gonna mix the butter into the dry ingredients and all that flour is getting wrapped in the fat from the butter. That's gonna protect or insulate all the proteins from activating and you're gonna have a wonderful, beautiful crumb to the cake. Time to pop this onto your stand mixer with a paddle attachment. You could also do this in a giant bowl with a hand mixer too. Grab a paddle attachment. We're gonna pop this on and mix on low for about a minute until you have a nice crumbly mixture. While this mixes, we're gonna separate eggs. We only want the egg whites because this is a light, beautiful cake. The yolks are just gonna give it a little bit too much color. It's purely aesthetic. Lightly beat your egg whites just for a few seconds to break them up. Now, let's take a look at our crumbly mixture. This looks amazing. Look at that. It's like the most beautiful sand you ever imagined in your life because it's made of butter and sugar. Right now, I'm gonna add those egg whites right in. Get this started mixing on low. Today's recipe uses one cup of milk. We're gonna have vanilla and a touch of coconut extract. I'm only using a little bit and it's really amping up the coconut flavor. If you don't wanna use coconut extract, you can omit it. And if you wanna get some more coconut flavor and it's a little bit milder, instead of using one cup of milk, use one cup of light coconut milk. Okay, one cup, in you go while mixing on low. Two teaspoons of a nice vanilla and one, almost one teaspoon of coconut extract. Now we're gonna increase speed to medium and mix it for about a minute. After 30 seconds, let's scrape the bowl down just to be nice and safe. Scrape that down, it's a nice lovely texture we have. 30 more seconds. Okay, if you're used to the normal way of making cakes, this seems sacrilegious. You're like, oh my gosh, you're over mixing the batter. But because it's been wrapped in butter, it's totally fine. Now I'm adding one cup of sweetened shredded coconut. This is the stuff that you use in German chocolate cake and it is so good. It's like my brother and I's uh, favorite sneak snack when my mom wasn't looking. And now we're gonna gently fold it into the batter. Now we're gonna divide the batter evenly among the three pans. And it's a thick batter as you can see, so we definitely need to spread it out. Each of these pans is getting about 450 grams of cake batter just in case you're measuring things out. These cakes are ready to go into the oven, 350 for about half an hour. Make sure you rotate them halfway through the bake and you'll know they're done when a skewer inserted in the middle comes out clean. Let them rest in the pans for 20 minutes and then invert them to cool. In you go. My cakes are out of the oven and they're cooling so that can only mean it's time to make an amazing coconut cream cheese frosting. Hello, delicious. So into the bowl of my stand mixer, fitted with a whisk attachment, I'm adding equal parts butter and cream cheese. Eight ounces of each, that's 226 grams. I'm also adding in a quarter teaspoon of salt. We're gonna mix this up until it's creamy and looking nice and fluffy. Mix it on high, should be about three minutes. 
This looks great. I just want to show you what you should be seeing. Look at that. It's like an amazing amalgam of cream cheese and butter. I bet it tastes delicious, but it's for the frosting. Scrape the bowl down really quickly. And now while it's mixing, we're gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla and an optional half teaspoon of coconut extract. Mix that in. And now we're gonna add about five cups of powdered sugar a cup at a time. So just gonna mix it on medium speed. Just let it incorporate and then add the next cup in. Each cup, by the way, is 120 grams. My last cup of sugar is in and we scraped the bowl down. So we're gonna mix this on medium speed until it is fluffy, creamy, and amazing. And by the way, I've also made coconut cakes with a Swiss meringue buttercream, but instead of just butter, I've had coconut cream and butter, and it is very, very nice. So let me know if you wanna see that on the channel. This, however, looks beautiful, fluffy, and amazing. So now it's time to assemble our cake. Add a little dollop of frosting just onto your cake stand to hold everything in place. The first layer of cake goes on and you can see this baked up really nice and flat. I'm adding one cup of frosting onto the first layer. This is a third of a cup triggered scoop and it's so handy. Gosh, a nice coconut cake is one of my dreams come true. You could also check out my Italian cream cake which has coconut and pecan in it. It's so good. We're gonna add the next layer right on top and repeat that process with one additional cup of frosting. Spread that out again. And you really just want a nice level layer so your cake builds up nicely and isn't lopsided. Here we go. Our last layer goes right on top. I'm gonna add most of the frosting on top with some on the sides and we'll just work it out. This does not have to look nice in any way, shape or form because we're gonna be coating it completely with coconut. So really, don't worry about smoothing it out at all. Just have a nice layer of coverage and make sure everything is sealed with buttercream so it doesn't dry out. So you have a choice here. If you want your cake to be angel white, we're gonna use shredded coconut. If you want some play of contrast, a little crunchiness, you can toast your coconut in the oven or even on a pan. Just move it around every couple minutes because it browns really quickly. 350 is fine. So I'm adding two and a half cups or 250 grams of coconut. I'll sprinkle some on the top and pat it down, and then we'll also be patting it on the sides, but as you know, it'll get a little bit messy. As long as your counter's clean, you can just scoop it up and pop it back on. One important thing is to not wait too long after applying the frosting to uh, put the coconut on, because the frosting will set and dry out just a little bit, and your coconut won't stick. This looks good to me. To make cutting easier, chill your cake for half an hour, Give it a slice, and you're ready to enjoy. That cake melts in your mouth. There's coconut flavors throughout, and that cream cheese frosting is luscious, especially when paired with the shredded coconut. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe, and if you like this video, check out my cake playlist.